Today, I plan on installing a flush mount power plug on my pickup truck for the block heater. I happen to own a 2014 Ram 3500 with a Cummins turbo diesel that really needs to have a block heater in the winter months. But this modification should work on any vehicle that has a block heater. The unit I plan to install is a NOCO GCP1 AC plug port. It consists of a receptacle with a recessed plug that's mounted in a flange mounted housing with a gasket and an attached cap. And the cap, the gasket can be oriented in 120 degree increments. And when closed, is reasonably weather sealed. There's a 16 inch extension with a complementary three prong receptacle. I will leave a link in the description below. The reason for installing an AC plug port on the exterior of my truck is to improve the convenience of connecting and disconnecting the block heater, especially when it's cold out and dark. I will show how fiddly the current setup is. Okay, so next I'm going to show you where the current plug is located on my truck. So on my truck, the plug is actually tucked up inside the bumper, which I hope to show here. Okay, so what you can see here is, this is the plug, it's got a cap, and you'll, you'll see it's, it's actually installed with a clip. So imagine it's, you know, 10 degrees outside or what have you. So you pull that out of there, and now you got this, this flat three-wire cord just hanging. And then you'll, you pull the cap off, and there's your three-prong US AC power cord. You bring your extension cord up and you plug it in. Okay, that's not too bad looking, I suppose. But like I said, you know, imagine it's been snowing and it's dark outside and you want to plug it in for the next day. So you plug your you plug your truck in overnight. Then you come out in the morning and maybe it snowed some more overnight and you got gloves on and like I said, it's you know 10 degrees. You can actually hear the block heater already already warming up the, the coolant. So now what you're supposed to do is you come out and you unplug your extension cord. And ideally, you put the cap back on, but now it's really cold, so it's stiff, and you may not you may not get it back on there, or may not want to. And then you have to get in there, and of course, like I said, it's dark. And you're trying to get your you're trying to get up in there and you want to put that clip on there so of course what what invariably happens well to me anyway is it doesn't get clipped it just it just it just hangs there and you wind up driving around and it's flopping around in the wind and worse you may not get the cap on and then the contacts for your plug are exposed getting you know road salt and everything else on there and they're getting all corroded and I imagine after a while you know the, the cord starts to fray and and so on so the plan today is to install this AC plug port to alleviate all of this so my plan is to install this AC plug port somewhere in the recess of this plastic air dam. The next step is to ver verify that I have adequate space behind here. So first of all, I need to see how the cable cord is gonna get routed down and through. So I have, I have a little bit of space between this frame member and then down by the 
back behind the bumper there. And next I'll crawl underneath the truck and look at the bumper from the back side. So what's interesting is there's quite a bit of room back here. That black plastic thing that you see there is the recess that I'm looking at using. Now what you notice is I do have this frame member, but it's not really in the way. So I can pretty much mount, mount this guy anywhere in here that I'd like. So my, my temptation is to mount it either in the center, like so, or clear off to one side. So be, before I actually drill that hole and install my AC port plug, there's a few things I need to do to get to prepare. So one thing I did is I actually changed the orientation of the, and the routing of this cord for the block heater. I actually released the, two of the, the clips that are popped in the holes in the back of the bumper and I was able to reutilize one of those clips to have this plug face a little bit more down. So when I plug in the, the receptacle for the, the port plug, I also want to wrap some electrical tape around when I'm all done. But I have this extra, this extra tab here on the receptacle that I'm going to cut off and trim here in just a bit. Now while I'm at it, the extension cord that I'm using, which is a nice 12 gauge outdoor rated extension cord with a lighted receptacle, which I currently have unplugged, also has one of these tabs. And by the way, I've not been able to determine for certain what that tab is actually, what the purpose of that tab actually is. So if any of my viewers know what that's for, I would appreciate knowing, learning about it in the comments. Now if you see here, one could argue that that, that would help you push the, push the plug into the receptacle, and it might actually help prevent you from sliding your thumb accidentally down across the contacts. But what's interesting to me is you don't have a complement for that on the plug. I can speculate as to why that would be, but I don't claim to actually know. So the reason I need to, to trim off that tab is it actually interferes with, with this uh, NOCO GCP1 port plug, as you can see. So I need, I need to trim off that tab. So first, I will use a pair of diagonal cutters. And just, I'm just gonna go ahead and just, I'll just clip that tab right off of there. And then I'll just, I'll follow up with the utility knife just a little bit, just to neaten it up a bit. That looks pretty good. I'll do the same thing with my extension cord. Now notice, if you try this at home, it may be a good idea to unplug it first, which I have done. So first I'm gonna do it with my diagonal cutters. That didn't work great, but it's not too bad. I'll give, give try it again. All right. Now let's see if I can trim that down a bit. That looks pretty good. Now let's test it just to make sure it fits. Yeah, that's much better. So the next step is to figure out where I want to put that hole and mark where I actually where I want to put that hole. So by my experimentation, I've determined that I want to go seven inches out from this edge. So just using a indelible marking pen, I'll just put a big old mark right there at the seven inch mark. Then I will utilize the gasket off of the
plug port and I will mark the hole the housing on the on this power port is two inch so I'm going to use a two inch hole saw to drill that hole in a way I'm going to just check check it to make sure it's correct I just hold it up against the the gasket you certainly don't want to under drill that hole undersized because it'd be hard to hard to go back with a bigger drill but you also don't want to make it too big so I'm using an eighth inch pilot hole because the the drill in the center of the hole saw is quarter inch and, and as you can it's gonna it's, I know it's gonna want to drift a little bit okay that may be a little low so that's good to know okay so now that I got my pilot hole drilled I can bring in my the pilot for the hole saw and I'll just I can drill this pretty slow and as you can see I'm not too far off and I can kind of raise it up a little bit nice and slow it's just plastic after all okay actually that looks pretty clean so before I, I drill the smaller holes which are 3 16 I'm going to insert insert the, the port plug so that I can get the alignment correct and so that I get the holes exactly where I want them so but what I'll do is taking the, the the cord from my drill just to make it a little easier I'll fish it down in a direction that I want it to go reach up underneath the bumper and then put the put the receptacle through so I can just connect them and then it'll make it a lot easier to pull the cord up through so now I can set my port plug in the hole so next I'll drill the first of the smaller holes could use 3 16 but I elected to use 1364 just to give me a little more clearance and it fits the hole a little better and now I will install the first screw so I'm using M4 hardware stainless steel I decided to go ahead and use metric since the rest of my truck is all metric so this is a 16 millimeter M4 screw with a nylock or generically sort of known as a nylon insert lock nut I'll also back that up with a, a washer on the back side okay so I put the first screw in and got it snugged up a little bit just to make sure things don't move around on me too much now I can go ahead and, and drill the other two holes and ins insert those two screws now I'll crawl under the truck and install the washers and the nylock insert lock nuts so now I have all three screws in, installed and snug. It looks pretty good. Okay, so now that I got I got the port plug installed and I got the, the receive end connected to the block heater plug itself, I'm going to go ahead and put some electrical tape on there. And uh, though it's probably not completely necessary. I bought some of this Scotch Super 88 and the reason I did is it's it's rated to uh, zero degrees 
Fahrenheit or minus 18 degrees C. Oh, so I'll start, I guess I'll start here on the plug end. And kind of stretch it as I go. And I could be pretty liberal about the use of this tape. Of course, that little cap is in my way. And I'll cut that edge just to be clean. So another step is to secure the new cable to the truck using some zip ties, otherwise known as cable ties. So I've used, these are the UV outdoor rated zip ties. I considered using stainless steel, but I was afraid that they, they may be a little bit more, a little sharper and have a tendency to cut into the cord. So I wrapped, I started by wrapping one around the existing cable. It also occurred to me that I can re remove this cap. So now I can snug that cable tie up a bit. I don't have the official tie wrap tool. That's feeling pretty good. And I'll trim the excess. All right, so now we're all set. It's time to try her out. So I got my extension cord energized, as you can see by the handy dandy light at the end. You just simply flip open the cap, insert, and the block heater is now warming up the engine. So now imagine in the morning you come out Truck's covered in snow, maybe some ice. It's below freezing out, maybe the wind's blowing. You come out here in gloved hands, and all you gotta do is pull them out, put the cover back on. Isn't that slick? Okay, that is it. I think I'll leave my block heater plugged in for the rest of the day. If you found this information useful, please give me a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more do-it-yourself style tutorials. Ta-ta for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Well, actually, you would see me in the next video. Well, maybe, if you subscribe.